All right, everyone, in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the corruption of the Democratic Party. We have a lot to break down here. We're going to be looking at all of the different aspects, how they tie in together. We're going to show you how all of this started, how all of this is going. We're going to take a look at Jimmy Dore. He's going to break down his take on a third party, which I, I'm in complete favor of anyone who tells me anything about the democratic party i don't even want to listen to him I'm, I'm not even entertaining this foolishness with nina nina turner because i already know nina oh, i'm gonna break her down too because nina turner is is part of the justice democrats and we're gonna we're gonna break that down too we're gonna guys we have a lot to unpack and this this is gonna be real jam-packed so this this first clip we have kyle talking about uh this guy here this is the guy that aoc took out now you can see this is before she even took him out this is in May 20th, 2017. And Kyle and, and Jink actually raised over $1.2 million, which Kyle said in another video. So these guys know how to make some, get some money. And this, they, they made, they had get, gotten a $1.2 million off of uh fundraising before they even got the 20 million from Katzenberg. And everybody keeps thinking that Jink is the corrupt one. Guys, Kyle was, Kyle was in on that $20 million too. He's part of TYT. So don't y'all just think that it's just Jink. Because why else, why else does Kyle keep trying to, uh, keep us in a Democratic Party voting for people that he knows aren't going to do anything? 2017, these people aren't doing anything and Kyle's still running cover for these people in 2021 talking about, oh, they're just weak. Oh, they just need to fight more. Why is he trying to keep, now he's trying to get us to vote for Nina knowing that Nina, Nina, Nina said in a video, yeah, I'm accepted by all, and she named all of the, all of the, um, she, uh, Ro Khanna and AOC. Oh my God, these are all the people that's not doing anything. You think that's supposed to make us say, yeah, yeah, let's vote for Nina now because she just named everybody who's not doing anything. But let's get into this video. He's like, I'm going to go raise money from Wall Street. I'm going to come back here and vote in favor of Wall Street. You can't get any more corporate than that. This guy is a sellout among sellouts. What a clown he is. He doesn't care about his constituents. He doesn't care about his voters. He cares about his donors. He's taken $71,000 from real estate PACs. He's taken $167,000 from securities and investment PACs. He's taken $255,000 from insurance companies, uh, $85,000 from banks, and $105,000 from Big Pharma. This guy is, he's as bad as it gets for the corporate Democrats. But guess what? Yet again, Justice Democrats has the solution. Let me introduce you to Alexandria Ocasio. Uh, she worked for Bernie Sanders' campaign in the Bronx, worked very hard for him traveled to Standing Rock during the standoff that was happening there. Why? Because she actually cares about the issues and she cares about the people. She studied economics and international uh, relations. She's taking no corporate money, no PAC money. This is, to be a Justice Democrat, You ha that's a requirement. You can't be a Justice Democrat if you're taking corporate and PAC money. She's taking no corporate money, no PAC money, and uh, she's for a new New Deal. She's going to push that. She's going to push for ending private prisons end the drug war, how many, how many lives have been ruined because of private prisons where they try to find new lobbyists, try to find new ways to lock people up because they make more money the more people are locked up. She's going to fight on these issues. She's also going to fight for free college. She's right there on Medicare for All. She's right there on re-regulating Wall Street. Every area where Representative Crowley has failed you and sold out, she's going to be there to fix it. She's going to be there to vote the right way because she's only beholden to her voters. She's not beholden to her donors because, well, actually, you know what? That's not true. She is beholden to her donors because her donors are you. So that's, that's the big defining difference between a corporate Democrat and a justice Democrat. Corporate Democrats take corporate and PAC money and they represent them. Justice Democrats take individual donations from the people, and then they represent the people. So, again, this is why we need you, and we need you to get involved. Go to justicedemocrats.com, sign your name in support of the movement if you haven't yet. The more names that are there, the more people who say, I am a Justice Democrat, the more powerful we become. Okay, now everything that Kyle just named, pretty much AOC, three, four years later, it's 2021, she hasn't done anything any of that stuff especially medicare she doesn't even want to bring it up and he says they don't take pack money but here it is justice democrat super pack there's a lot of he says that all they have is small donors like you this is open secrets when we come over here to open secrets you can go check it out yourself open secrets and you go over here to donors guys 
$150,000? That's, that's a small donor? $125,000? This is, this is Justice Democrats' PAC donors. This whole thing, this whole thing with Kyle is just a lie. It's one big scam. And he keeps trying to keep us in a Democratic Party. And I'm, and Kyle is a sheep herder. He's like Bernie in AOC. He's a televangelist raising money for these corrupt politicians. Look, guys, look at all of this. No, five. What small donor do you know has five thousand dollars? When I think of a small donor, I think of somebody like what Bernie was talking about. My average donor is twenty-seven dollars. Guys, what small donor do you know has a hundred and fifty thousand dollars? I don't know any. So maybe and let's see. All right, this is just the first page. Let's let's go five pages deep. Look, still three thousand. That's not small donors, guys. Three thousand. The average person doesn't have to. And it and this thing goes all the way to seven hundred, seventeen hundred. But you can see that, like the uh, the first five pages, four thousand. That's not a small donor. Four thousand dollars. We're not small donor is twenty seven dollars, fifty seven dollars. You know, let me see if I can squeeze something out of my paycheck. Who, who has who has three thousand dollars to go give to a candidate and hope that they get elected? Kyle's full of it. I want to show y'all this. Now here it is. Now. This was 2017. Now we get into 2020. He's, look, they still haven't did anything for Medicare for all. Now let's, let's listen to this. So this is Justin Jackson teaching a politician, hey, here's why the politics of this are intelligent. So it's not just the correct thing in principle, which it is. It's also the correct thing in terms of strategy. Go ahead, vote against Medicare for all in a pandemic. I want to see it. I want to see it. Th that'll be one of those things where... It'll go down in the history books as shameful. 50 years from now, 100 years from now, people look back and say, holy shit, the party that was supposed to be the left party, half of them voted against universal health care in a pandemic? Justin Jackson is saying, force their hand, and then we win either way. Because if, if we win the vote, okay, Medicare for all gets through the house. If we lose, okay, we lost, but you win by losing because then you expose who the charlatans and the con men and the frauds are. And you use that against them, and you get more left victories as a result of that. This Lying once again. And he's saying how shameful it is. If it's so shameful, if it's so shameful what they were doing, why right here? Now look, this was December why, of last year. If it was so shameful, why in June of 2021, six months later, he's still defending these people. He said they will go down in history as shameful. And yet he defends them. Now, I'm going to come back to this video because this video here is something else. But I want to go to this video where Cori Bush actually goes and she says that they're not going to do anything. In this video, I'm, the video I'm going to show you is bef two months before this video. All right. Now, look at this. This is Cori Bush. She's going to tell you that we are not going to vote as a block, so forget it. There is no, if they're not, if the, if the, if the progressives, if it's 10, 11 of them, they can stop any bill from going with 11 of them. And Kyle keeps saying they're weak. They won't, no, they're not weak. They, they have a strategy. Kyle keeps saying they don't have a strategy. They have a strategy. Their strategy is to keep gaslighting us and voting along the lines with the Democratic Party. That's their strategy. That, that's the strategy. Corey Bush is about to break it down to you now. Well, just listen. I was actually asked a phenomenal question from the interviewer here, so massive credit. Um, she's basically going to be asked, hey, why, don't, why doesn't the left use their leverage like the right often does? And her answer is beyond underwhelming. Senate, uh, Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia has essentially, uh, you know, used what seems to be a veto power against a lot of progressive priorities, including some of the ones that you've uh, mentioned. But in the, in the House, Democrats have this two seat majority. There are uh, six members of the squad of which you are a part. Uh, what's stopping you from flexing that same power for your agenda? You just said you would vote against a compromise on qualified immunity, are you prepared and the rest of the squad prepared to use that kind of veto power that you have if you vote as a block? You know, it, it, I'm prepared to do whatever is needed to make sure that we, you know, that we, uh, that our agenda moves forward. Um, but I can't speak for the rest of the squad members at the end of the day. My sister Ayanna, Rep. Ayanna Presley says it all the time. You vote alone and you're voting for your districts. So you're voting for the people who voted you in. There it is. 
There it is. I've, I've gotten a lot of shit for saying that exact thing in my criticisms of the Justice Democrats. Again, a group which I co-founded. So I know a thing or two about what the idea was. Because I was one of the ones who fucking created it. Now, he just said, now she's an insider. And she just said, we are not going to work together as a group. Guys, can you imagine that a politician, is, they're supposed to be as, as a group, they're supposed to be the squad, and they're voting as an individual? That means they have no power. That, that means that means that they're just lying to us, and nothing is ever going to get done. And now, now Kyle's saying, vote for Nina Turner. Why? She's gonna vote as an individual. She said Ayanna Presley. I think Ayanna Presley is like one of the. I think she's like the the leader of their little squad group. And if she's saying at the end of the day, now I'm, now look, now we're gonna go back to the other one. Now here's Kyle. Two months later, he's still acting surprised after after she went on after he showed the clip of her saying. Now listen to this. People who are trying for a third party route, even though I think it's. Oh, oh, he doesn't want a third party. He wants to. Did you hear that? The people that are saying a third party route. Let, let, wait, let, I can't believe he could say anything about a third party after we keep voting Democrats and they keep failing us and we got no chance with Republicans. And he's, but Jimmy's for a third party. Let's listen to this guy. Yes, people who are trying for a third party route, even though I think it's largely fruitless and they're going to do terribly, I think they should still go down that path. And I also think effectively like almost anti-politics roles work too, where you get directly involved building unions, some sort of general strike, large protest movements, yeah. you know, fighting on specific issues, even at the state level and the local level. I think that's the path forward in terms of grading Justice Democrats and how they did. I think they've been a miserable failure. Mm -hmm. And the reason I think they've been a miserable failure is because I know as a co-founder of Justice Democrats, the whole idea was you are going to be a Tea Party of the left. Now, he's lying. He says the reason that he thinks that they failed is whatever he's about to spew out of his mouth. This is the reason that they failed. She just told you. Right here, Cory Bush just told you the reason why they failed. They vote individual. Now, now, this is on his show. How does he come back two months later and say the reason I think that he's lying? How can you think that, that they failed when you know why they failed? She just told you why they She said why they failed. Look, why? He even, look, he even named it that. Why the left gets steamrolled? That now, now he's gonna now you're gonna come back over here and now you're gonna oh my this guy is is he's just a careerist he's just gonna keep promising people progressive so he can keep saying at the end, at the end of every show he says go ahead and guys go ahead and donate to my show please if you can that's that's his thing that's his thing. that's his grift let me just keep putting all you gotta do is keep saying this this is gonna be finally be the progressive that's gonna save us all right let's let's continue. I want you to hold the Democratic leadership just as accountable as you hold the Republican leadership. Because famously, John Boehner hated the Tea Party just as much as he hated the Democrats. And hated now he's talking about the Tea Party or the Republicans. These were people who had no principles. And the only way, the only reason they were even fighting the Republicans was because they had the Koch brothers or the Cox brothers, however you want to say it, these billionaire that ha were hell bent on destroying the, the whole world. You know, these, these guys, I think, I forget what, um, what chemical company they own, but I think it's Dow or one of them. But these guys are in just terrible human beings all the way around. They've tried to destroy schools. They, I mean, these, these people have been trying to destroy the country for 50 years and they have billions of dollars to do. And he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna say he wants them to be the, like them, the Tea Party of the left. But what you want them to be unprincipled and just go and, and, and just be, oh, let's, let's continue. That's exactly right. All right, we're going to skip some of this because he's just talking. <laughs> they doing the strategy. If they were doing the strategy, they would All right. and they're doing it poorly. Mm -hmm. They're just not even doing it. Here it is. It's not even that they're doing the strategy I want and they're doing it mm -hmm. poorly. Wait. That's exactly yeah. right. So, <laughs> he still so, he wrote a book 10 years later being like, screw you. <laughs> they don't even have the correct strategy being implemented right now. It's not even that they're doing the strategy I want and they're doing it mm -hmm. poorly. They're just not even doing the strategy. If they were doing the strategy, they would find maneuvers they could use. Like, for example, there's enough of them to block all legislation. Right. Right. Why don't With you block all board. legislation and say, I'm not going to stop blocking it until Joe Biden takes mm -hmm. out his pen and legalizes mm -hmm. marijuana through executive order, because he can do that. I'm also going to say, you have to at least eliminate $50,000 worth of student debt. In reality, he should do all of it, but he has the legal authority to do it through executive order. So if you really want to play the kind of politics that I'm in favor of, 
That's what you fucking do. Because guess what? Even if the media attacks you and they're gonna attack you, you can fucking fight back. These people are scared of their own shadow. Yeah. Like, oh my God, CNN came after me. Their negative eight fans are gonna hate me. I don't give a fuck. Fight back, say, I, I'm fighting for the people. I remember uh, when the Tea Party was willing to... Now, he just said, he keeps talking about a strategy. Corey Bish just told you the strategy. The strategy is to vote as individuals. You don't think these people are in politics. You don't think that they, they know that voting individually, they have no power? They know that their 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 whole they're, the whole mission of the of the progressives is to give the illusion that the Democrats are going to do something when they're not. That was the whole reason of Bernie. Bernie brought in millions of progressives, and what did Bernie do? Bernie did it twice. Bernie turned all over all of those lefties. He gave them all to Hillary Clinton, and Hillary Clinton hates Bernie. And Hillary Clinton is by far the worst human being. In, in politics, by far. And, and now Kyle's sitting here two months after he already showed. He guys, this this is this is on his channel. He he he's the one who showed why they get steamrolled. Then he comes back and say, "Well, they have no strategy." Kyle, the strategy is do nothing. That is the strategy. Their strategy is to fall in line with Mama Bear Pelosi and keep putting more progressives in that are gonna do the exact same thing. And this this guy, man, the more and, and guys, he, Kyle Kyle angers me, and this guy, it's it's not even none of this has a, anything to do with 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 uh with Jimmy. All of this stuff is just him lying. I'll hold up the full faith and credit of the United States. Do you think that that's like inevitable? Or so it's both. It's both things. I think there are both individual failings, and I think it's systemic as well. Where I differ from some of my lefty friends is that a lot of people like to argue that like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ilhan Omar and fill in the blank with whatever justice Democrat, they're now corrupt just like Nancy Pelosi. Mm. No, words have meaning. The word corrupt means something very specific. Mm. You're taking money from certain donors and you're doing favors for them. That's what corrupt means. They're not doing that. They're not corrupt. They're just simply not the same as Nancy Pelosi. So you're fucking factually wrong if you make that case. But they do have DC brain, which is basically a rotten brain where you get there and you're now you're involved in the culture, you're surrounded by these people. These are people you fucking eat lunch with and see every day and you learn yeah, their personal correct. stories. And so now the group thing takes over. It's and you don't want to be the sore thumb that sticks out. The game mentality. You, you don't want to be the sore thumb that sticks out because guess what? If you do the sort of grandstanding fighting politics that I want you to do, everybody's gonna fucking hate you. Everybody in DC is gonna hate you. Everybody in the media is gonna hate you. It's a lonely fucking world. So guess what? That's where the individual failing comes in because even though it's really hard and you're really- That's where the individual feelings come in. They already, I mean, that's the only way they, they're going to fail is as individuals because they're not gonna fail as a group. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, he just, he just, why, why, why won't he just be truthful? Why won't he just come on here and say, hey man, look, I did a show on this two months ago. Cory Bush said they're not gonna vote as a, as a, as a block. So, it's, it's hopeless. Why not just say that? Why do you keep saying all of this? He's, he's, he's just going on and on rambling. He's just lying. That's what he's doing the direction of don't do anything don't rock the boat that's why we sent you there so you have to stand up and fight you have to be willing to be hated by all of them i will just say again the tea party didn't give a shit and and when Jim, Jimmy, he was really, when he said that thing about they're not corrupt, he was talking to Jimmy because Jimmy said, Jimmy calls them corrupt and he calls them the fraud squad. And he said, no, the, you see, I, 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 no, you're fucking wrong. You're, you're, blah, blah, blah. That's not right. He's full of shit. That's what he is. Guys, in, the, in my last video, I did, I did the def, I showed the definition of corrupt. I went Google it and I showed you. Guys, corrupt is taking either money or any type of personal gain, personal gain. AOC has a lot of personal gain. She's a, she's a celebrity. She has A1 um, uh, health care. She, she went from a bartender to making $174,000 a year. And all she has to do is lie to us and, and, and do whatever Mama Bear says. Whatever Pelosi says, just do that. And tell us, oh, yeah, yeah, y'all y'all should just wait for health care. I mean, this woman, she campaigned on on um on Medicare, she, can't, she I mean, it was it wasn't like something that no, she actually campaigned on it, just like Biden. Biden campaigned on two thousand dollars, then turned around and said, "Nope, fourteen hundred. Biden campaigned on fifteen dollars hour, then he went right in and said, "Nope, I can't do it." Everybody keeps thinking that Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, guys, let's believe that's that's twenty other Democrats that don't want these bills to get passed either. 
It's just they used Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin just because they're in red states. And they can say, see, we can't pass it because they stay in Republican states. But Chuck Schumer's the same way. Chuck Schumer just can't say anything because he's in a blue state. So he can't go out there and say, yeah, I agree with Manchin. We don't want to help y'all either. We don't, hell, we have people that, that want to keep y'all, that donate to us that don't want y'all getting $15 an hour. A bunch of our corporate buddies, they don't want to give you $15 an hour. Chuck Schumer. Nancy Pelosi, none of these people want to give you $15 an hour. You don't see them standing on TV jumping up and down saying, no, let's get it. Let's, nah, they're not doing that. They're just letting, uh, Manchin and Kirsten take all of the heat because they're in red states. So they're like, hey, you know, uh, well, it's their fault, so we can't do anything about it. You know, well, well, but it's 20 other Democrats in blue states that, uh, guys, you gotta understand, most of these, a, a lot of these Democrats, 10, 10 of, uh, five out of the wealthiest, uh, people in the Congress, not just the House of the Senate, the whole Congress are, are Democrats. Five of the wealthiest. Nancy Pelosi is the wealthiest woman with over a hundred million dollars. I forget. I think the uh, the guy. I think his name Warner. This guy got over two hundred million dollars. And these are the people that we th- we keep. Oh, it's the it's the Republicans. Nah, they, these Democrats. They don't want to give you. They don't, they don't want to give you higher wages. It hurts their friends. Now, let's go. Let's keep going. Now here's Kyle. His count on about third party. Listen to this idiot. After he's filled, he just said, "Yeah." Now in the last video with with Crystal, he in this video he says, "Yeah, you know they they did terrible." But but now now guys, remind you, we started here with these people in 2017. Four years later, we've gotten nowhere with them, and he still wants to keep us there. Now look, this is wait. Let me show you this. Now this is Kyle. I don't know if you can see this. This is like May 24th. Just to set some context, because I didn't realize I was about to jump into this exact clip. He was just talking about the third-party approach and why he doesn't necessarily think it's the right approach. Okay, what are you saying? Let me know if you want to talk in that kind of setting. We can talk. Official People's Party U.S. <laughs> so I guess this is Nick Brana who wants to, like, bait me into some sort of debate. Dude, I wish you well. I hope you build your party. The last thing you should want is a prominent lefty YouTuber to, like, be put in a position where I come out strongly against you. See, that's the thing you don't understand. I hope you succeed. I just don't think you will. There's a big difference. I want you to do well. I don't think you're going to do well. I'm doing an objective description of what I think will happen. That's not saying I want you to not do well. I hope you do do well. I just don't think you're going to do well. So I don't know why you would even want to lean in to have a prominent left YouTuber come out more against you because if we have a debate and a discussion and you find out all the ways in which I disagree with you, I promise you it's not going to go well for you. So what you should do is accept my tepid support of like, I hope you do well while thinking you're not going to do well. And if you think I'm wrong in that uh, assumption, how many People's Party folks have been elected since you founded the party? I'm not taking a shot at you. I'm just saying, relax with the whole like, let me step to you a little bit and let's talk about it. No, I I want you to do well. You have good policy ideas, so I agree with you. I wish you well. I just don't think you're going to do well because you haven't fucking done well so far, and I don't see a plan, in effect, that will make you do well. So, and there's no pithy response of, oh, he's defending the Justice Democrats. You can you can make here because fuck the Justice Democrats. They failed. They, they did wrong. They did bad. But that doesn't mean that you're the solution. Now, he just said, fuck the Justice Democrats, but in a previous video, he was defending what they're doing that, you know, he, 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 he God, this, this guy reminds me of Jink so much. They just flip flop back and forward. Jink was doing that with forced to vote. One day he's saying, no, no, you got, you can't fight. You can't fight. Then the next day he said, no, you got to fight Pelosi. Then the next day, he, no, don't fight Pelosi. It, they, man, these guys are grifters, man. They are, they're, they're just grifters. That's what they are. They're just using the, the left movement to, if, if, if you're going to keep voting within the Democratic Party, nothing's going to change. Now, now let's, now, let's listen. Let's listen to Jimmy right here. Now, this is Jimmy, like, two months after Kyle. It's time for progressives to walk away from the Democratic Party and support a third party that is free of corporate influence. It is time to support a corporate party. I mean, a non-corporate third party. It is time. Now, whether that's a movement for a people's party with Nick Bronner, whether that's the Green Party, whether... Now, he just was talking about... F the you know not, nothing to do with the people's party. Now let's not let's let's listen. Let's listen. Let's listen to him again. He says it doesn't matter. The people's party, the Green Party. I'm with Jimmy on this. Kyle, Kyle is getting paid 
I, I, I keep saying he, he must be getting some of that 20 million dollars that Jen got to keep trying to keep us voting Democrats. Corporate influence. It is time to support a corporate party. I mean, a non corporate third party. It is time. Now, whether that's a movement for a people's party with Nick Brana, whether that's the Green Party, whether that. Whether that's socialist alternative, you to vote for these two parties again, you're complicit. So get behind a third party and work for it. Um, and again, there's a lot of people. Well, here's what uh, Alexandria Ocasio Corset says about. Uh, you know, in what you said earlier too, I wanted to go back um, to what you said about our left party. We don't have a left party mm. in the United States. Mm. The Democratic Party is not a left party. Mm -hmm. um, the Democratic Party mm -hmm. is a center or center conservative party. Mm -hmm. We do not advocate for, we do not, we can't even get a floor vote on Medicare for all. Mm -hmm. Not even a floor vote that gets mm -hmm. voted down. Mm -hmm. We can't even get a vote on it. Mm -hmm. So this is not a left party. Mm -hmm. There are left. Okay. Y'all see that? Jimmy, Jimmy's for it. I'm for it. Anybody who tells me anything about Democrats, I don't even listen to them. I, I, I don't. All right. Now, let's go, let's keep going. Look, 62% of Americans want a third party. God, that's over half. That's over half. As you can see behind me, it says support for third uh, U.S. political party is at a high point. How high? Of this is March this year. That's from Gallup, by the way. How high of a point? 62% of United States adults say that parties do such a poor job representing the American people that a third party is needed. An increase from 57% in September. Now, 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 remember, guys, remember we went from, uh, we went from Kyle right here in April saying that the Democrats, uh, uh, the progressives, they're not going to do anything. To Kyle, two months later, it's still in, look, two months later, we went from May was that January, February, March, April, May, June? The next month, he's making he's making excuses for the same people who just said they're not gonna do anything. So why in the world would we listen to Kyle when we've been listening to Kyle since 2021? And the only thing Kyle has done is raised a whole lot of money in the meantime and kept his little cushy job sitting in his and sitting in his house lying to people. That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. Now let's keep going. Now this is this is Jink. Now, this is when Jink was lying. Uh, this is awesome. Now, let me say to progressives in Congress, you are also creating a mess within the movement by never taking action against established Democrats. Jink just told them, don't take action. He's This whole thing is Jink telling them not to do anything right now. And then he does a tweet saying, you guys got to start doing something. Now, now this... I did, I did a, a, a segment on, I did a, um, in my, in another video that I did. And what this is pertaining to is forced to vote. And, and also it was about challenging Nancy Pelosi for her speaker's position. And Jink was doing like Kyle. This, th th if you go through this whole video, it's, it's just, and, and, and Jimmy was, when I did the video, I was like saying what Jimmy was saying, like, what? What is going on? Because I actually went through and I, I actually went and I found all of the tweets and I went through them and I was like, on a Monday, he would be like, don't challenge Nancy Pelosi. On a Tuesday, he would be like, y'all have to challenge Nancy. And it was just like, what is, and then, then I kept saying, then when I, when I looked and I saw that, that $20 million, that the guy that was giving him $20 million was also at a fundraiser raising money with, along with Hillary Clinton. And he was, he was raising money for nancy pelosi it made sense that i say oh okay that's why this guy that's why jink jink got money from this guy and i can see why jink keeps saying no don't challenge nancy pelosi because the guy that's giving him money is at a fundraiser with nancy pelosi trying to get her elected and then no and and of course they're against medicare for all because there's videos of hillary blatantly saying i oppose medicare for all she's she hillary opposes anything that would help people the only thing that hillary believes in is bombing children that's that's she's just a evil vile person that's what she is let's keep going now look at this now we in july all right now i showed y'all he went on crystal collin friends talking about what a mess the, the justice democrats are then guys i showed you a video he says fuck the justice democrats well nina turner look guys look at this look justice democrats nina turner joined the justice democrats 
So what is he talk? First he said, "Oh, the guy talks out his out the side of his ass so much." I mean, he I just showed you a video like a month or two ago. He's saying, "Fuck the Justice Democrats." Nina Turner is a Justice Democrat. Then right here, three look guys, this is three days ago, July fifteenth. What's the date? July eighteenth. Now he's talking about look. He wants you to vote for Nina. <laughs> talking about they're trying to stop Nina and all of this, so vote for Nina. Guy, let me tell you something. Jink is back in Nina. Kyle is back in Nina. That is enough for me to say no. Because Jink and Kyle are careerist grifting thieves. That's what they are. They they make money off of doing this to keep us locked into the Democrats. They know they know whatever they're telling us. They got they got a lifelong they got a lifelong job just bitching about what, what they know that Cory Bush already said they're not gonna do. So every time a new candidate come up, they could keep pushing that and keep pushing it. No, nothing's going to happen. Now look, all right now, now look, I'm, oh guys, now Nina is a whole nother story of 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 just look. Oh now look, now let's talk about the Justice Democrats. I want to show y'all this. Now the Justice Democrats endorsed Nira Tandon for the OMB. That's the Office of. Let me see what is it. Uh, here it is, Nira Tandon. Now Biden wanted to put her over. This is um now. Her and Jimmy have a very long, hateful history for each other. This lady hates Jimmy Dore, and she hates uh Bernie Sanders. So that tells you the type of person that Nira Tandon is. And the Justice Democrats wanted to vote for her to be over the Office of Management and Budget. Guys, this woman, let me see. Oh, that's Jeff Weaver. This woman was so terrible that the Democrats and the Republicans didn't want her in there. She's a Hillary Clinton goon. She's a she's a a, a a guard dog for Hillary. So that tells you she's a very vile person. Now let's get back into this. Okay. Now listen to this. This is the Justice Democrats. This is the one that Kyle founded, him and Jink, this corrupt organization that that's, that he said doesn't take big money that I just showed you. They take $150,000, which even 3000 was a lot of money. Now now, guys, oh, and let me show you, I want to show y'all this. This is the same Nero. Now, these are, now, now, the Justice Democrats, they're supposed to be progressives. Guys, I'm going to show you this. This is Joe Biden. Joe Biden wanted to put Nira Tandon over the Office of Management that I just showed y'all back about three, four months ago. This is Joe Biden in a, in a Senate hearing trying to cut Medicare, Medicaid. Oh, wait, let me show you, let me show y'all this one. Fact check. Joe Biden has advocated cutting Social Security for, he's been trying for 40 years. This is the intercept. They don't tell the truth very often, but this is true. He was getting with Republicans. Guys, let me, hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me, this is, this is the guy. This show you how terrible Joe Biden is. Joe Biden. Wait, here it is. Look, listen, listen to this guy. He's, a, he's, a, he's in a Senate hearing. Listen to this. He wants to cut everything out. serious reservations, the effects of which are by those that this is going to cure all and promises by those if it passes that we're going to go to hell in the handbasket and rapidly and all our liberties will be taken from us. Uh, I hope we kind of keep our eye on the ball here and at least have an open mind um, uh, to the prospect that we can make this amendment better and still have an amendment. I'm sure someone has looked out over the next 15 years and concluded if we stay on the track, even the one predicted by the President of the United States, that uh, we will be uh, providing for an increasingly larger share of every tax dollar just to go to reduce interest on the debt. And to me, that's the driving force behind this amendment. When I introduced the budget freeze years ago, the liberals of my party said, it's an awful thing you're doing, Joe. You are all the programs we care about, you're freezing them money for the blind, the disabled, education, and so on. And my argument then is one I make now, which is the strongest, most compelling reason to be for this, but this amendment or an amendment, and that is that if we don't do that, all the things I care most about are going to be gone. I mean, whatever happened to that old conservative discipline about paying for what? This is a supposed to be Democrat talking about conservative, whatever he said, conservative. This is supposed to be a Democrat. You spend. I'm up for re-election this year, and I'm going to remind everybody what I did at home, which is going to cost me politically. I, when I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans benefits. I meant every single solitary thing. 
in the government. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice, I tried it a third time, and I tried it a fourth time. Somebody has to tell me in here how we're going to do this hard work without dealing with any of those sacred cows. <laughs> Guys, and you can see, look, this article, this was like last year, and they were, and they were talking about, he's, he, was he was still trying. He was trying all the way up to like 2016 when he was still in, still in, uh, in, uh, in uh, with Obama. He was still trying. Yeah. These are the people that we're dealing with. These are and these these are supposed to be Democrats. This guy wants this guy said cut out Medicare, Social Security, so so Grandma doesn't get a check, so disabled people don't get a check. This uh, this guy's more right wing than Mitch McConnell. I never heard Mitch McConnell say anything that bad. And look, now I want to show y'all. Now this is this is this is the lady that that the Justice Democrats wanted to um they wanted they they were endorsing her. OK, this is the same woman I was telling you about that they wanted to put over, that Biden wanted to put in over the office of management, over management and budget. He wants to put this woman and she says the same things that Biden says. She wants to cut Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid. Why would Biden want to put a woman that wants to cut Social Security, Medicaid and Medicare over the office of management and budget? Why would he want to do that? And why are these so-called progressives? Why were they fighting so hard to get her into office? These guys. The Justice Democrats, they, they just, they just, they, they're, they're supposed to be progressives and they, and they, and they talk so highly of Joe Biden. They're always talking about how he's doing such a great job. AOC is talking about how, how a great job he's doing. Pamela Jamal, she's talking about a great job Biden's doing. This guy wants to cut Medicare and he try, and guys, we're not talking about, uh, guys, this was, this was in like, look, this was, oh uh, closed it. Dang. Oh, look, this was in March. He was trying to put a woman that was that wanted to cut this in there. Uh, listen, listen to her. Listen. O'Malley and Cuomo, who've taken a much more balanced approach on, on budgets, where they've looked at taxes as well as reforming programs and, and cutting programs. And so I think that's that's the approach the American people are supporting. Because if we were here, one wants you to take us deeper into entitlements mm -hmm. uh, by Twitter. Ms. Tander, do you know? What the president means when he says entitlements are on the table. Any specifics and anything you would endorse? Yeah, I mean, so there are a range of entitlements um, that, that, you know, I think when we're talking about entitlements, we're talking about Medicare, Social Security, Medicaid. These are programs that, um, that uh, people receive support because of the status that they have. So when after 65, you get funding from Social Security and Medicare. Um, actually, it's growing, it's going, getting older for Social Security. But, uh, and, you know, the president has $300 billion in his budget in cuts in Medicare. Um, that comes on top of cuts in Medicare from um, um, the Affordable Care Act. So he has put specific cuts in the budget already. <laughs> Guys, Biden wanted to put a woman that wants to cut Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare. People out there trying to fight to get Medicaid and Medicare and all of this stuff. And the, and the Democrats are actively working against this. And Kyle, Kyle saying, Kyle is saying, vote for Nina Turner. She's a Justice Democrat. And the Justice Democrats are in, in, endorsing this woman that wants to cut it. This woman is a Hillary Clinton. For, oh, guys, wait, let, let me see if I can find, let me see if I can find the one. Um, Look, look at all of these videos. Uh, Jimmy, look, this is Jimmy Dore. All you gotta do is type in Nero Tandon. Go to this channel, type in Nero Tandon in the search bar. Look, look all these videos against Nero Tandon. Look, look, all these videos. All of these. He's been telling us about, oh wait, look, look at this one. Clinton advisor scolds Nina Turner and progressives to shut up. This is what, this is what Nero Tandon is telling him. And, and the Justice Democrats are endorsing her. Guys, this is actually Nina's picture. And the people that she just joined with three weeks ago are the people that's endorsing this woman. And Nina wants us to believe that she's going to fight for Medicare and Medicaid. Look, look at all these videos. Look. Look. And, and, and I'm not talking about, look, a lot of these seven months, four months, five months. Look, but look, two years, three years. Jimmy's been warning us about this woman for years. Look at this. A year, a year, a year, two years, a year. He's been warning us. Now, you just saw it. All of the evidence. And here's Nina. She just joined. Why would she just, why would she join these people? Why would she join them? Now listen, this, this is, this is the Justice Democrats. This is them, 
uh, endorsing Nira. At, these, these are supposed to be progressives now. I can't lie to you guys. This video hurt. This one hurt. This is from CNN. Um, the executive director of Justice Democrats was asked about OMB pick Nira Tandon. Here's what happened. We have some breaking news for you now. Democratic Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia just announced that he will vote against President Biden's pick to lead the Office of Management and Budget near its handed, putting her nomination in jeopardy. Manchin saying in a statement in part, quote, I have carefully reviewed near attendance public statements and tweets that were personally directed towards my colleagues on both sides of the aisle from Senator Bernie Sanders to Senator Mitch McConnell and others. I believe her overtly partisan statements will have a toxic and detrimental impact on the important working relationship between members of Congress and the next director of the Office of Management and Budget. Uh, let's bring in our panel, uh, Alexandra Rojas. Uh, this would be Biden's first defeat, uh, and obviously um, a defeat for Neera Tandon personally because of a bunch of tweets she's done uh, that were rather harsh. Yeah, and I mean, you know, there's there's public record of, of those tweets, but the reality is I think that Joe Manchin is the one being divisive right now. We are in the middle of a public pandemic. Joe Biden was just elected by a huge mandate uh, by the American people. We have to deliver as Democrats, and we need people in positions of power who are ready and prepared to go big in this moment and not leave anyone behind. The mentality has got to be of the Democratic Party especially, uh, but any elected official that we have to move quickly to save as many lives as possible. Uh, and I would also point out that he had no problem voting to confirm uh, other appointments of clearly uh, partisan members uh, when it was the previous Republican administration. There should be no, I think, opposition to, to some, you know, folks that are being proposed by the Biden administration who have, you know, clearly are ready to do the work and are ready to get the job done and they feel are the best prepared to do it. I just don't get it. I really don't get it. I don't understand it. Is the reasoning that every Republican is going to oppose her, and since I don't like Republicans, I will support her? Now, Kyle just said he doesn't get it. He just doesn't get it. So why would Nina Turner, who's supposed to be this, she's supposed to be this, she's going to turn her progressives around, and she's going to really get the progressives in line. Why in the world is Nina Turner just joining them three weeks ago? Kyle just said, fuck the Justice Democrats. But then he said, hey, vote for one. Nina Turner. That that makes no sense. It makes no sense. Fuck them, but vote for them. Guys, him and Jink, guys, these, these two, these two are, are grifters. They are grifters. They just want you to keep supporting them so they don't have to go get a real job. They'd rather just keep lying to you year after year and just keep stringing them along. Hey, next time, let's, let's, hey guys, in two more years, we can vote for another one. Give me two more years. I'll lie to you for two years. Then they get another one and lie to you. Guys, these, these guys are grifters. And, and just him, I mean, you have to, you have to understand. Kyle and Jink are the ones who put together the, the Justice Democrats. So of course it's corrupt. And everybody keeps thinking Kyle is the innocent one. Kyle is corrupt as hell. Because if he wasn't here, he went on Crystal and Collins and said, look, this is, this is a waste of time. They have, Corey Bush already said they're not going to do nothing. Instead, he keeps defending it. Then he says they're not corrupt. Oh, they're not corrupt. They're not. Oh, he's full of it. Now, I want to show you all something else that's disturbing. I want to show you all something else. Let me see if I can. Not know that. Well, this was Joe Biden. This was Nira. All right. Let me show you all this. Now, this guy. This guy here. Dave Weigel. For some strange reason. This guy has become best friends with Nina Turner. Many of y'all don't know who Dave Weigel is, but Jimmy knows who he is. I'm going to show y'all this. Jimmy's been warning us about Dave Weigel for five years. Why would Nina all of a sudden start getting endorsement? This guy is a, is a right-wing Republican goon who likes people like John, who likes warmongers like John McCain and Mitt Romney. That's that's his friends, George Bush, you know, warmongers. So, why why is Nina why is Nina getting in bed with the Justice Democrats who the Justice Democrats who are endorsing Nina uh Nira Tandon who Republican right wing goon Joe Biden wanted to put in Joe Biden is I'm telling you guys, they thought Trump was Trump was a fake Republican. Trump had been a lifelong Democrat in two thousand nine. He started thinking about running it, so he wanted to run as a Republican. Trump is a life 
lifelong Democrat. Joe Biden is a real right winger. He is a real Republican. No, no Democrat is supposed to say, let's cut Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare. That's Republican talk. He's talking about we have to be conservative. He's talking about, did you hear him saying something about the deaf and the blind people? He's like, they can go without, in other words. This guy, I mean, the guy's a, he's a, he's a psychopath. He's dropping bombs in his first six months. He's already bombed Syria twice in, in but look, this is Dave Weingold. Now, why is this guy all of a sudden behind me? Now, this guy works for, um, he works for the Washington Post for the billionaire, uh, Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon. That's who this guy is. He's a smear merchant and a propaganda pusher. All right. Look, all these videos. Look, Jimmy's been warning us about this guy for four or five years, six months, five years, four years, two months, four years, uh, three months. I mean, he's been talking about, he's been telling about this guy for five years all the way to the present. Four years. Look at this. Four years. Four years. Four years. He's been, he's been warning us. Now look at. I want to show y'all this. Now this is him. I want to show y'all this. This is him tweeting the Nina mobile. Look at this. The Nina. Guys, there is no. There's no Democratic Party. They all. The whole party. Ever since Trump came in. If you go to MSNBC, everybody on there is ex Bush. CIA and FBI agents. The whole MSNBC, and they keep talking, they, people think, oh, they're Democrats. They think the Lincoln Party. The Lincoln Party were a bunch of warmongers that hated Trump, so they started hanging, so they started, um, so they became best friends with MSNBC. But look at this, guys, look. This is Dave Weigel. Dave Weigel. Why is he, why is he back in Nina? Guys, yeah, look, look at this. Look, he's talking about, look, he's another tweet about Nina. Guys, what the, what, what is going, there, guys, there's, there's no Democratic Party. And look, now here's Nina. I want to show y'all this. Nina is retweeting this guy. <laughs> wow. Now, 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 now guys, they, there's plenty of videos. If y'all want to go check him out, go to Jimmy's channel. Go to Jimmy Door. Y'all can type in Jimmy Door. Type in, go to the search bar. Look, all right, I'm going to show y'all. There's going to be playlists and all of this. All right. You're going to see videos, playlists. Just go over till you see this little, this little, uh, search bar thing. Type it. Well, it's cleared up now, but I had Dave Weagle in there. But that's all you have to do is put his name in. It's going to show you every video on this channel from him. But I want to, but now you can see how terrible a person he is, but I want y'all to see this. We're going to let Jimmy tell you some things about him. Hi, everybody. So I'm going to, we're going to go through a few things today. We're going to show you the anatomy of the establishment smear. Okay. So. I don't know if you saw this. This is in the Washington Post. It was by Dave Weigel, right? Dave Weigel, our mustachioed friend. Dave Weigel, who wears a fake mustache because he thinks it's funny. Um, and he writes for the Washington Post. Now, let's remember the Washington Post led us into the war. They're lapdogs to power, just like Chomsky says. And right now, their owner has a $600 million deal with the fucking CIA. You think I'm kidding? That's from the Nation magazine. By the way, Nation magazine, they took that article down. So there it is. So now it's, so we know this, right? So when someone, so they have, so when they're going to start writing stories, trying to debunk, trying to debunk fake news, you're going to go to a newspaper that has, their owner has a $600 million deal with the fucking CIA and they don't, disclose it that's the part that's the horrible part it's all horrible but what's even more horrible is they don't disclose it so that's called unethical journalism that's the opposite of journalism so now what they're doing is lying to you and keeping secrets they're supposed to tell you the truth so dave weigel writes this for the washington post he's going to talk he's going to debunk fake news even though he works for a newspaper that's in bed with the cia and they've been printing cia stories without checking them so they've been f filing false story after false story after false story because they're in bed with the CIA and they print stories about, hey, Russia hacked our power grid in Vermont. Totally fake story. And they printed it. And they, it's still at their nooses. You go there, it's still there. Totally made up story. Fed to the Washington Post from the CIA. They printed it uncritically. And they said it was anonymous sources. Did you know the state, Washington Post didn't even call the electric company in Vermont? They didn't even call the p public utility. They didn't call anybody to check the story. They just fucking printed it. And it's still there. So just so you know, so we all know this, that they're in bed with a uh, $600 million deal to this, with the CIA. 
Although, if you bring it up to the reporter, the guy who's trying to fucking debunk fake news, if you bring that up to the reporter who's trying to debunk break, which is what happened. There he is. That's Dave Weigel. And then someone brought it up. This guy, Russ G. Lewis. He says, hey, uh, uh, Washington Post made a $600 million deal with the CIA, and this guy is telling us we should believe him. And he links to a story from a website called hangthebankers.com, which I like. That sounds like a good website. <laughs> so Dave... Weigel, who's the, I don't know if he's the lead political reporter for the Washington Post. I'm pretty sure he is. So instead of doing the ethical thing and saying, yes, I, we know that and we should disclose it editorially, but it doesn't affect me. You know, he could say a lie like that, that it doesn't affect me. Of course it does. <laughs> you know, that a guy has a deal, your donor of your paper has a deal with the deep state for three times what your own freaking newspaper's worth. And you work for the establishment and your paper beats the drum for war every time there's a war. Of course, it affects you. You fucking do. Now who's being naive, Kay? So instead of copying to it, Dave Weigel lies in public about, about this. He lies to this guy who brings it up. So now if Dave Weigel had a shred of ethics and integrity, if he had a shred, he would go, yeah, you're right. Because By the way, because this is a, just a regular person. This Rush G. Lewis, he doesn't have a blue check. Rush G. Lewis is not a big shot. So Dave Weigel doesn't have to treat him with any respect, and he doesn't. So the guy's telling the truth to Dave Weigel. Dave Weigel, instead of being a guy with integrity and character and admitting it and going, you got me, yeah, that's a, that's a problem, he tries to gaslight the guy and smear the source. That's what they do. They smear the source, just like Dave Weigel smeared me, just like we're going to get to how they're smearing Greg Greenwald. Well, quick side note, Jimmy, in the rules of argumentation, whenever... No, guys, you can see, Jimmy's been covering this, and this is just four years ago. Jimmy's been covering this guy for five years. Nina gets in bed with this guy. Guys, I mean, look, what is going on, guys? What? What is going on? This is, guys, this stuff is getting so crazy to me. I mean, she's, she's getting with the Justice Democrats who are, who are endorsing Neera Tandon. She's with Dave Weigel, who, who, who is a known. Yeah. And guys, that was four years ago. There's plenty of stuff that Jimmy has covered that he's done since then. And there's plenty more CIA stuff that Amazon and, and Jeff Bezos has been involved with. That was four years ago. They was involved with the CIA. They're much worse now. And, 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 uh, they're getting a lot of these contracts with the CIA. You know, I wouldn't even trust using what's that thing that, that little Amazon thing that people talk into. I wouldn't even trust getting on that thing, man. I, I, I saw somewhere that, that, uh, this thing was listening to people talking and all. I wouldn't trust anything from Amazon dealing with the CIA. But, um, but yeah, guys, and you guys, you, like I said, it, it started way back here with Kyle and, and he's just, I, I mean, I don't understand how the guy says, fuck the Justice Democrats. And then he says, but go vote for Nina, and she's a Justice Democrat. Him and Jake, guys, I, I don't trust either. I don't trust anyone that says vote for a Democrat, especially one that says vote for a progressive Democrat. Because Kyle and Jake have been running this con for years, and they're going to keep running it. And like Jimmy said, the only way we have to get a third party. So, guys, I want you all to spread this video to everybody you know. I want you all to give a thumbs up, and I want you all to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And click the all notification when you click when you click um, subscribe so you can get all of my, my content. But, guys, nobody's doing investigative journalism no more. So, I went ahead and put some things together for y'all. Thank you, and enjoy this video.